Hey guys, today I wanted to show you how I've been using the black box and the OP1 together. And uh, one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this was some of the limitations of the tape and of the sequencer on the OP1. With the black box, we can have up to 16 loops or uh, parts. And uh, we can also have a sequencer that can run in uh, all kinds of lengths. We have within that sequencer, you know, we have the piano roll where we can edit events, we can change the velocity, move notes around and that kind of thing. So let me just show you uh, what I got here. We got a little bit of a context of, of a drum loop and we're gonna go into one of our empty cells and we're gonna hit info, hit info again, go over to our MIDI tab and whatever channel you have the uh, OP1 set to, in this case, it's channel 16, we're going to Put our MIDI in and MIDI out to 16 because we're going to be sending MIDI both ways. I'm going to play the OP1 into the sequencer, have it play back. One of the things that I noticed right away when I was trying to uh, figure this out and set it up is if I just go into my keys now, I'm playing the OP1, which is cool. Super simple, makes sense, should be that way. What I didn't anticipate and what I didn't find out uh, without having a workaround is actually how to do the opposite. When I'm playing here, um, if I have something loaded in that slot, uh, it will want to trigger it from this screen, but it, it won't allow me to just put MIDI notes into a blank MIDI track. There's not really a blank MIDI track on the black box. So the workaround I found is to um, just load any old sample doesn't matter which one it is. Um, make sure it's on sample mode. I think I had a problem if it loaded it in as a clip, if it was a longer loop. But we got um, loaded in there, and if you see, now you can see it is receiving MIDI now that we have a clip loaded in there. We're going to go over to the main tab, and here's the, the trick. We're gonna turn that all the way down because we don't want to hear or trigger whatever um, sample we've loaded in there. So we got a little bass patch now. We'll go to our sequences, select an empty sequence, and now we should be able to record our bass line. So that's cool. Now, and I can go in obviously into the piano roll and I can move notes around and edit them and I can use the touch screen and all that fun stuff. But if I want to keep layering and, and building like a whole track with more than just the four channels that I have on the tape here, I'm going to want to resample this as a loop. So just go into any empty quadrant here and we have it set to left, right, because that's our OP1 is coming out into the black box. And then obviously this USB cable is going into the uh, device port on the back. So we can uh, check our volume here, make sure we're not clipping, set how the length, we have it set to two bars and now So now we have it saved as a loop. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is to, in order to keep layering, let's go ahead and clear the sequence for the bass. And we're gonna leave that channel kind of as our OP1 uh, MIDI track. And when I say channel, I mean this cell right there. So we have this cell right here is our loop. And if we hit play, we notice that it doesn't play. So what we need to do is um, enter it into one of the cells here. So let's just pick this one, for example. So now that it's pink, we're gonna set to record to that one. And if we hit record and we head back over here, we wait for it to come back around. So now on that sequence, we have one note that's, um, we have that one note there that's triggering the start of that bass loop. Now let's go back to uh, another blank sequence that we're gonna use to record in their MIDI part. And we'll come and find another sound. Maybe we'll play some chords. I know this uh, beautiful musical example, but hopefully you, you get the idea here. And now what we can do is play along with that too. And then we can just keep doing this over and over again. So. Now we have that sequence there. We'll go to another empty cell. And we can even do this while it's running, which is kind of almost like live looping, you know? I'll show you how to do all this uh, live. So 
so that's still playing we want to go over to this one uh, we're gonna select a, another cell that's empty and while this is recording now we can turn off the MIDI So I hope you get the idea and all the cool things that can come of this is using the black boxes like a 16 track looper minus one track because you're going to have to kind of reserve that MIDI track to kind of uh, for your sequencing and then to, to resample it. So hope you took something away from this. I hope it maybe sparked some other, other ideas of other ways you could use this combo. I think I'm just touching the iceberg here of, of how these can be kind of a powerhouse combo when used. Um, in tandem with one another, but I really like the idea of being able to use the sequencer from the black box um, just to be able to manipulate stuff. And then it's also fun to be able to play those sequences back and maybe uh, tweak the sound a little bit before you commit it to audio bit by recording it into a loop in the black box. So if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the stuff that's on this channel, it does a lot of good for the good old algorithm to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. And if you really want to support the channel, uh, head over to Patreon. There's a link below and we would just be more than thankful if you support us on Patreon. We're trying to post uh, free downloads and tools and unreleased tracks and unreleased videos over there. So thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.